Africa is known to have some of the world's best stargazing locations, but soon it could be also known for what's happening among the stars. The African Space Agency officially began operations earlier this year from its headquarters in Cairo. It aims to help existing space programs from individual countries collaborate as well as supercharge the continent's space ambitions. We'll hear from the man leading that mission shortly, but first, a look at how a staple of Nigerian cuisine is helping scientists to develop the future of space travel. For most Nigerians, Egusi soup is a tasty tradition. But could this simple one-pot dish soon be served up among the stars? Melon seeds used to make the soup were blasted into space in August as part of an experiment. They were chosen by entrepreneur Temidayo Oniusun, and now he's hoping to make that a reality. The goal is that you know, in the next couple of decades, when people are living on the moon or on the Mars, and you know they, you know they are they're looking at growing food and all of that, food that are native to Africa would be part of that. So even 50 years time, Africans are living on the moon. We want them to be growing and planting a goosey and be eating. Now, back on Earth, scientists are carrying out tests on the batch of Nigerian agusi seeds sent into orbit. So we're figuring out, can the plants adapt to microgravity? And if they can, <clears throat> that will be of value for astronauts for long-term missions, like going to Mars or going back to the moon. Because, especially for Mars, which is a long trip, Astronauts need to have a good source of nutrients, so having a variety of food crops that they can grow in space, that will be of value to them. For Africa, these simple seeds are also symbolic of the continent's growing space ambitions, a cultural tradition helping to shape the future. Now across Africa, countries are building space programs, mainly focusing on communication, Earth observation and partnerships abroad. The African Union's Space Agency aims to coordinate these efforts, but its first challenge may be convincing the public that space is not a luxury. I sat down with Tijan Watara, the head of the Council of the African Space Agency, and asked him how he'd answer any skeptics. To these brothers and sisters, African brothers and sisters, I would say that space is part of our daily life. And currently, all the benefits, I'm talking about the money coming from space in Africa is owned by the foreign companies. Be communication by satellite. All the mobiles we are using, the services are provided by companies from abroad, meaning the money is taken from the continent. Most importantly, space can help for water management water pollution, water scarcity, the solution to find the appropriate place to dig the wells. Space can allow us to manage our forest. Space can allow us to improve the agricultural productivity. Space can allow us to control our oceans where the boats, foreign boats, are coming and taking all our resources and polluting our oceans. Oil, space, oil spills monitoring, uh, identification of fisher zone. All these kind of activities, space is part of. You know, you may hear that Africa is the less connected continent. Being the second biggest continent, the traditional ways of uh, installing the infrastructure of telecommunication, the remote areas are not covered. Therefore, satellite comes to reduce the gap of what we call the last miles to allow us to communicate even with our village. These are not cheap projects. So how will this kind of funding be secured uh, or how are you encouraging the different countries to, to go about this? You are right. Uh, I would say space is not cheap, but space is not also expensive vis-a-vis -vis of the benefits. I will explain to you something. Space is affordable now. We have two steps in space history. You have what we call the old space, meaning 
until 2005, space was big budget, 100 million US dollars. Developing satellite was taking five to 10 years. But since 2005, we are in the era of the new space. The new space came because of the nanotechnology, the small technologies. Since then, we can develop nanosatellites, small satellites. Therefore, space becomes affordable. This is why you have a boom in the continent. Because with 50,000, you can have a CubeSat. You can have a small satellite. Therefore, the satellite is more than affordable. And what role would you say the Africa Space Agency is playing in facilitating these kinds of uh, uh, developments? The African space role will be to coordinate the space activities in the continent, to create a kind of regulatory frame which will help the 55 countries to do space activities without uh, or with less problems, and to make sure that space is in the middle of the economic development of the continent and most importantly, to create the local capacity. We have to develop the scale, not only to develop the scale, to create the critical mass, meaning not one, not two, for a continent with one billion, 300 million inhabitants now, that will be two billion or more than two billion in 2050. You need to have numerous experts in the space arena to be able to address the African needs. It is a joint effort, our role will be to work with the member states, to work with all international partners, to make sure that we push in that direction. And that is one of our visions. And we think that Africa can be a labor market for the world without seeing our young people moving from Africa. Because if the connectivity is improved, they can stay in the continent and work for all these space high-tech companies in the world, as the Indians are doing from India. This is something that can be one of the solutions for the migration, because people are migrating because of the salaries also, for a better life. If you have companies, and it is good for European and American and Chinese companies, you have experts, they can be relatively, relatively cheaper than those in your countries, but at the same time in Africa, the salaries they will be getting will be more important encouraging them to stay instead of going. What I'm saying is just some examples of measures, but we are really working. We are trying to convince, to advocate, and to create awareness, because young Africans will tell you, we don't know to whom to talk. They will tell you, we don't know where to start. We are there. We will connect them. And this is what I, I told to several brothers I met over the last two days here in Germany. They are very well experienced and talented young people. I told them, guys, I'm here for you also. Let's work together, let's communicate, let's connect, let connect uh, you know, each other to the appropriate people. This is what it takes, among others. Huh?